Welcome to the St. Alban Road Gym. For timekeepers and scorekeepers, you need to show up 10 minutes before the scheduled start time of the game that you're going to work. You'll be assigned to either the East or the West Gym. As you walk into St. Alban Road Gymnasium, the East Gym is on the right side and the West Gym is on the left side. Report to your table as soon as you get here and find your partner that's going to be doing the timekeeping and scorekeeping schedule for you. If you get to St. Alban Row and the score clock is not on the table as it is here, please walk over to the concession stand closet that's in the East Gym corner and acquire this, the uh, controller for the gymnasium. The controller should be in the concession stand closet at the far right cabinet. Open the cabinet and find the controller Tupperware box or white container. Take the cord from the controller box and place it underneath the table back towards the curtain. As you get to the curtain, push it back with your foot and you'll see that it will expose the outlets that you can plug into. Take the uh, controller electrical outlet and plug it in. If the controller is set up correctly, it will ask a question. Do you want to start off where you were left off? Yes or no? If you have the right controller, just press yes and the system will be reset up for you. The system will now turn on the scoreboard for you in about three to ten seconds. To set the time for the game, figure out whether it is third through sixth grade or seventh and eighth grade. For third through sixth grade, the time is six minutes for each quarter for a stop clock. For 7th and 8th grade, it's a 7 minute quarter stop clock. So for 6th grade, you press set button and the time button. And the number of minutes you want for 3 through 6 is 0, 6, 0, 0, 0. Press the button yes and then period 1 and the button yes. Now the controller has corrected the scoreboard for the start of your game. If you're starting up the controller for a 7th or 8th grade game, it's a 7 minute stop clock. So you hit set, time, 0, 7, 0, 0, 0, yes, 1, yes. That will give you a 7 minute quarter for the first quarter and the start of the game. To control starting and stopping the clock, you can use the control stick which allows you to toggle the clock on or off with the horn, or you can detach the control stick and use the lower left buttons for on and off and the upper left button for the horn. If you have problems with the control stick, you can detach the control, control stick from the body and use these optional sticks or buttons here. To start the clock, you use the optional control stick that's attached to the controller. If you're having problems with the control, control stick, please detach it from the box and use the buttons on the keyboard to provide time on, time off, and the horn. But for this demonstration, go ahead and use the control, control stick. To start the clock, toggle the toggle to the right side of the stick. That will start the clock. You'll also see the clock counting down on the face of the controller. When the whistle is blown by the referee, you then toggle off the clock. When the referee hands the ball to the player, he will hold his arm up in, the, up in the air. When the ball is passed in, he will bring his arm down to his side, denoting the start of the clock. If a referee does not do that, then you start the clock when the ball is touched by the first player in bounds. If the referee does not arm swipe the ball in, ask him next time he comes to the table to arm swipe it in so you know when to start and stop the clock. So as the ball is touched, you go ahead and start the clock by toggling the button. One of the responsibilities is substitutions. When substitutions come up to the table, you ask them to take a knee on either side of the score table. Make sure they're not blocking your view so you can keep proper score in time of the game. When the ball is dead, and the dead ball occurs when the referee blows his whistle, at that point, if you have a substitute at the scoring table, you press the horn button on the controller. That will denote to the referee that he should look over to the scoring table and wave in the substitutes. If the referee does not hear the buzzer due to the loud gymnasium noise, you're welcome to buzz a second or third time. 
please try to make sure that you buzz the substitutes in before the referee hands the ball over to, an, uh, to the player for the inbound play. Setting the bonus. To set on the bonus, you basically hit the bonus button and it will de denote which combination. You press it one time and it will put it on the home team. Press it another time, it will put it on the guest team. Press it another time, it will put it on both teams. Then if you press it one more time, it will clear the bonus indicator. This way the referees will know when the teams are in bonus. You're in bonus when the seventh personal foul occurs. So the best way to take care of that is after the sixth foul and the ball becomes live, go ahead and turn the bonus on. In this case, we're going to go ahead and show you how it, it's done. When you press it the first time, it will turn it on for home. When you press it the second time, it will turn it on for guest. When you press it the third time, it will turn it on for both teams. Just decide which number of times you have to press according to who is in bonus. Keeping track of the score. It's rather simple. When somebody scores an outside shot, it's worth two points. So you press home score and then the number of points, too. And it will record it up on the scoreboard. When guest scores, let's say they score a foul shot, you can say guest scores one point. And then it will show it up on the scoreboard. If you accidentally misscore something and you gave it to the wrong team, you just hit set guest score. This point is supposed to be zero, and we want to set home score to three in this case. And that way, your time will be corrected. Here's a quick summary of how to score the different baskets in a basketball game. You have a one point shot at the foul line. When somebody hits a foul shot, you say, let's say the home score just shot a foul shot, score one. That will go ahead and give the home team one more point than what they have. If they shoot an outside shot with inside the three point arc, that's worth two points. Then you hit home score, two points. It will go ahead and add two points to that score. If somebody's outside the three point arc and the referee holds up three fingers, and then holds up two hands in top of the air, that denotes a three-point shot, or a made three-point shot. You press home score three, and it would add three to the score. If you accidentally give the score to the wrong team, you can reset the score at any time. Let's say that home is now six, guest is, th is zero. It should be three to three. So you just come in, say set home score three, set guest score three, and then your clock will be correct. Possession error on a game can be handled one of three ways. The referees can handle it by some device in their pocket or on their wrist. You can do it using a possession yellow tent on the desk that you can find in the gym bag or you can use the score clock. To use the possession arrow, you just basically push the possession arrow to see which team gets the possession, whether it's the home team or the guest team. So as you toggle this button right here, the next possession, it will change who gets it, who doesn't. And as you see, the green arrow up on the scoreboard is now pointed to guest. I push the button, and the green arrow is now pointed to home. That's how you keep track of the possession arrow.